Hey, what's up, guys? It's your good old boy, Twitter. Tweedle tweet. <laughs> oh my god. Now, the reason why I am Twitter, the Twitter logo, not only am I a bird, but also because we're going to be talking about the history of the internet. The internet was opened to the public in, in 1990, but in January 1st, 1983, there was a prototype of the internet, meaning that this was only accessible for those that are in private agencies, which then later on was then brought to the public. Also, it is worth mentioning that even before that, it was a thought. It was in the works in 1950s, but these were still called prototype until the 1980s uh, specifically 1983 it was brought up saying that something will be released that will quote unquote change the future and boy were they right before the internet was publicized when the prototype internet was first invented january 1st 1983 they tried sending a message from ucla to stanford california when they tried sending one message login once Stanford got the message, and ended up sending two letters. Low. That was the first message ever sent. <music> Keep in mind, these were sent by computers that would take up an entire room. Now, the reasoning for that was because not only was it not the best technology, but also because... This is when the internet and them inventing this computer stuff first began. For them to start, it had to be really huge. And also because if any wiring would be cut out, there would be some extra wires that would substitute it. And also because the freaking huge bulging wires were actually really huge. I think I explained it pretty well enough. 
It took them a couple of years for them to make a computer that wasn't as big as an entire room, hence the reason why the internet was also publicized until 1990. Imagine a world where every word ever written, every picture ever painted, and every film ever shot could be viewed instantly in your home via an information superhighway, a high-capacity digital communications network. What that would mean is you could transform your home into a mammoth interactive entertainment centre with the odd stock exchange and shopping centre thrown in. It sounds pretty grand, but it all comes down to computers communicating. And in fact, that's already happening on something called the internet that anyone in the world with a computer and a modem to connect it to a telephone line can subscribe to. And this was the beginning of the internet. Now, it's a no-brainer how, for you to access the internet, you have to have a computer. So that's what people did. They purchased a computer. And luckily, it wasn't as big as a freaking room! <clears throat> but the way to connect to the internet is completely different than how we connect to the internet today. They used dial-up. I really hope you guys know what dial-up is. What's dial-up, you may ask? Buckle up, kiddos, because we're going to be explaining what dial-up is. Dial-up was the way to travel through the internet. It was used by AOL, also known as AOL Mail, which still exists to this day. Kind of surprising. Until people realize they can use other browsers through dial-up, not just AOL. <laughs> Also, if you guys were wondering, AOL stood for America Online. Now, I hear you guys maybe thinking or yelling at me, WAIT JUST ONE MINUTE! How does AOL equal to America Online? It doesn't make any sense! Well, just look at this. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Alright, so now to explain how dial-up worked. So, dial-up worked like this. So, you had to connect your computer to a phone landline. I really hope you guys know what a landline is. <laughs> so guys, we have a bit of a problem. Now, as the time of this recording, I was editing like normal until the power got cut off. And then I accidentally dropped my mic in the process. <laughs> So, I had to deal with two things at once. One being, I had to fix my mic, and second, the power went out. So, in the meantime, I'm just gonna have my friend take over what landline is. Because wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, I eventually did get my power back on, but since I already have the audio of my friend already explaining it, I'm just gonna have her explain it. So, um, everyone give a round of applause to Emma. So a landline is a home phone that is plugged into a wall. Most people have it, but really just don't really use it. Another strange thing about it is that if you were talking to someone on a landline phone, someone, which is in the same house of course, would take the other landline from another room, because landlines have more than one phone plugged into it, and interfere with the other person's phone call. Just uninvitedly join the conversation. One person could be on one side of your house, and then somebody on the other side could jump into the phone conversation without warning. We'll be back after these messages. Head over the back up, let's see how everything is. It's going pretty good. Hey, look, there's some people on. Whoa. Yellow. This is Yellow. torture I'm going through. All of this editing. It's all torture. All in a downward spiral. CompuServe combines the power of your computer with the convenience of your telephone to bring you hundreds of online services, like a complete set of encyclopedias and the AP Newswire. It helps you decide on everyone's day with a new wild and wacky singing, talking Louis the Largemouth Bass. It sounds a bit fishy to me. Watch every time Louis senses you're near. This amazing mounted fish leaps to life. All right.
right, everybody, give a round of applause to Cookie, aka Emma. Hey, 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 you guys better be giving her a round of applause. I'm waiting, all right? All right, good. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel for helping me out because that's the only thing I can probably do to thank her. <laughs>
website starting using that type of format. The authorities took action once they themselves went to a website that had HTML in it. And boy was it hard to stop them. DSL. And no, not DSLR. That's a camera. DSL. Or actually, it's called DSL modem, so I should have just said that instead. DSL stood for Digital Subscriber Line Modem. So, what a digital subscriber line modem is, it's a device used to connect a computer or router to a telephone line, which provides the digital subscriber line service for connectivity to the internet, which is often called DSL broadband. Now, basically, some people can argue saying, oh, this is basically like an upgrade to dial-up, which you'd be correct, because with this case, you would have to connect your computer to the modem and the phone line to that modem as well, which is quite interesting, you know? <coughs> One surprising thing about it to some consumers out there was that this modem can connect to multiple computers throughout multiple Ethernet ports, and they can connect to the internet safely. And also, it was a lot easier to set up. Just watch how hard it was to connect to dial-up on my virtual machine. Now, obviously, yeah, I know it's a virtual machine, so it may not work, but just look at the steps they had to go through. So I'm now recording. Say hello to my entire school that's going to be watching this. Hey, school. Do you know what dial-up is? No. Well, congratulations, because I'm going to teach you how this works. This is where I'm going to show you and others how 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 the internet was back then. All right, here we go. Okay. Oof! Welcome to Windows 95. We don't actually don't care about that, so you don't have to you don't have to worry about that. But yes, this this is how uh Windows looked like back in 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 uh trust me, I know what I'm doing. So do you know what AOL is? No. Well AOL was the, the was the was the back was the way to access the internet back then. It was one through dial up and you had to go through your phone line and it was a hassle. So I live in the United States uh, oh whoa whoa. Oh. Yes, we still we still use America online and that's what we need. We are a new member. And uh, this is good. Also, if you didn't know, the internet back then was very really slow take take example my internet but like even more slower also if you ha if you had dial up uh, you couldn't call or be in the internet at the same time so if you wanted to make a phone call you have to unplug a computer from the phone line to use your f to, to use your phone I kid you not Ooh, connecting to America online I know exactly what I'm doing you believe in me sure what? Next it failed. We're unable to connect AOL to your TCIP. <laughs> no! Connect me anyway, you know? Sign on. Yes, please. This... this is not helping me. Oh, no, no, actually, I'm a guest. I'm a guest. S sign in. <gasps> Why? One eternity later. That sound in the back with the dial-up when I was trying to connect was um digital turning into analog turning back into digital and for those people in your class that are confused about what i just said that means that it's transferring the display screen like the actual screen into coding and then it's going back into itself so that you can actually view it the internet Fun fact, uh, ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. So if anyone asks you, uh, what's your ISP, what they're asking you is, what is your Internet Service Provider? Examples of ISPs are Comcast, AT&T, Xfinity, Google Fiber, Spectrum, etc, etc. You get the point, I hope.
downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral, downward spiral. The year 2000 was a mess for everyone because the internet, as we all know, runs through ones and zeros, so, you know, the most common tech, okay? Now, get this. So, the year 2000, that has three zeros, and <laughs> the highest number that probably, according to a bunch of websites and other articles and stuff like that, it can only, the one, the lineup code can only handle up to two or one. So either one zero or two zeros. It can't handle three. And so that was a big problem, especially when the year 2000 was going to hit. Hence the reason why 2000 was a pretty interesting year that day. But long story short, it was recovered. And this actually took almost the year 2000 for them to finish it. Well, resolved, fixed. You get my point, I hope. The present, today, right now. As of right now, I think we all know that the internet has evolved as to something that's humongous and technology that's advancing a lot, heavily a lot more. Humongous. I, I can't even find the right word for it. A lot of us take the internet a lot for granted, and so it's quite interesting on how the internet kind of evolved, because if it wasn't for the internet, then... I wouldn't be doing this type of video to begin with. In other words, I know this video's been going on for way too long. I think it's time to end it now. Yep, that's right, guys. This is now the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this, actually. I hope you guys learned something from this. I actually tried not to make it too long, but I also tried to make it entertaining on the way. So, yeah. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it was too long. I tried to make it funny along the way, but I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys later. Peace.